Today, we're going to talk about the best infill patterns using Bamboo Studio. Find out which one works best for you, as well as a bonus tip at the end. All right, jumping right in. The first infill pattern that we're going to use is the gyroid. So over here in your toolbar or your panel, whatever you would like to call that, we'll come down to sparse infill and I have gyroid selected and I'm going to leave all of them for today at 15%. I feel like that's a really standard percentage. And unless I need something to be really strong, I don't feel like I need to bump that up a lot. And so as we're doing this, we're going to look at the time it takes for each of these to print and also talk about the pros and cons of each of these different infill patterns. So we're going to slice this plate. The gyroid, as you'll see, is very, very... It looks a lot more dense than the rest of these, as you'll notice. And because of the way it's moving back and forth, it actually gives your your print a lot of strength from every side. So if I were needing to turn this cube, let's say on one of its sides, it's still gonna have the same amount of strength as it would as if I use this at the top and this is the bottom. So kind of keep that in mind with the gyroid. Again, it is a strength infill pattern. And for this one, it took 29 minutes, 16 seconds. So very reasonable for this size of cube that's four inches by four inches. All right, moving on to the next one, we are gonna jump over to the honeycomb. And I use the honeycomb a lot. This pattern is something that allows you to add strength, but the strength is only top to bottom. Anything that I put on the sides, or if I would try to put any weight over here, it isn't going to support it the same way it is as moving up and down. As you can see, these honeycomb patterns, they do not change. It prints the same pattern basically the whole way through the piece. And for that, it's really just kind of a two-way strength, meaning if I put something on the top, it's going to be very supportive. If I turn it on the side, I'm going to lose a lot of that strength. Uh, and that's honeycomb. And this one's going to take a little bit longer, 31 minutes, um, 37 seconds. So almost two minutes slower than using that gyroid for strength. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking for a strength infill. The next ones we're going to talk about are the adaptive cube. And this is probably my most used because of the way that it works. Most of the time I'm printing stuff, I don't need a ton of strength and I don't need it to be um, super dense. So with this 15, you'll see it's going to take 28 minutes, 26 seconds, uh, almost a full minute faster than that gyroid. But you get this nice little pattern that kind of works its way up through. It has a lot of strength all the way around. But the advantage of this is when you have a print that has a large volume in the middle, it will just kind of leave a nice big void in the middle of your print. Saves you a lot of filament as you're printing this. Again, the cost in this one is 21 sense. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind as we're going on to the next one. Uh, the next one I'll talk about is the grid and just a very, very simple grid pattern because this allows you to kind of print and see what's going on. And you'll see a little bit more cost. Uh, Time-wise, we're talking 30 seconds. That's not a big enough difference to really worry about. Uh, but this is going to be similar to the honeycomb in the fact that your pattern just stays the same up and down. Um, and if you need a pattern or if there's a chance that there's going to be any light coming through this and your infill might show up, this is a really good pattern to set. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is something that I just started using. And this is really, really fun to look at as you're doing it. It's called the lightning infill. And the lightning infill has basically one goal. And that goal is, I'll, I will just start at the bottom and I'll show you. As you notice, zero amount of infill our costs are 14 cents. Our time is 28 minutes, uh, 14 seconds. So similar to that adaptive cube. But as we start to go, you'll start to notice that the lightning pattern starts to show up. And there is one goal of this lightning pattern, and that is to get a smooth top surface. That is it. So right here, you can see right before we go to that top, that first of four top layers, it is all the way filled out. And this is just designed to give you a smooth top layer. Uh, very, very cost effective, not very strong at all. These are very, very weak prints. If you need any strength out of this at all, do not use this pattern. But if you're just trying to print a lot of stuff really fast, it works really well. The last one that I want to talk about is the support cubic. And it's very similar to what we we're just looking at in terms of speed. Uh, just, I think it looks a lot of really fun as it prints and it kind of is fun to do time lapses with. And that's why I've started using it. And so if I slice this plate, you'll notice, again, if I go all the way to the bottom, very, very little support. This is 19 cents to print. Um, it's going to be 
roughly about the same time as the adaptive cube and the lightning and the fact that it's pretty quick, but it just fills up slowly and really has only that same goal as the lightning is that to give you a smooth top surface. Other than that, it's just kind of there for uh, no strength purposes. Just kind of keep that in mind. So those are my top six that I use pretty regularly. I am going to give you one bonus one that I think is kind of fun to look at if I need like a more decorative print. So if I'm looking for something to be decorative, I really like this um, Hilbert curve. And I think it looks fun. It kind of gives me more of like a, a puzzle or a maze look, but it's really fun to just look at. And I've used this a couple times on stuff that I want the light to come through, the front and the back to kind of give me this pattern. Uh, it looks like a decorative pattern on the outside of the, the print. Let me know down in the comments which one you like the best or which ones that you use the most. If I missed any of these um, or if I missed your favorite, definitely let me know what one's your favorite and I'll, I'll go give it a try. Thanks for sticking around to the end. As always, give us a like if we were able to help you out. Uh, consider giving us a follow or uh, subscribing to the channel as well. Thanks again for all the support that we get.